Who gave us? Who gave us? Who gave us? Call and Wade introduce himself. Yeah, I'm sorry, but we have another uh, little technical difficulties. But bear with us because you know the devil always uh, slides itself in the way you know of righteousness, mm -hmm. trying to hamper the word of the Most High Yah. Shabbat Shalom again, and um, welcome to the keepers of the house of light. Praise him. Praise him. And um, my name is Uriah Ben Israel. Obadiah Ben Israel. Thank you. Yes. Who are us? We are the keepers um, of the house of light. Are dedicated to spreading the righteousness, love, mercy, and forgiveness of our Father Yahweh Elohim, our Elohim of hosts, by and through His Son Yahshua, the the Messiah, the Lamb of Yahweh, the King of Israel, the High Priest, and our Redeemer and Savior, whose name be blessed forever. We are here to teach and proclaim the gospel of Yahshua, who magnified the law of Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for it, man. Um, um, could you, um, Madi, can uh, go ahead and um, um, announce about the title of today's class? So the title of today's class is The Attire of the High Priest Within the Mosaic Law. Once again, that's the attire of the high priest within the Mosaic Law. Praise God. Thank Praise you. God. See what we can get today. Um, at this time, we're gonna um, we're gonna go straight into the pre-class, pre-Sabbath class, and uh, turn your book to the Shema. And the Shema can be found in Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four and five. Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. All right, my love. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one at an eight. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart, mm -hmm. and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Praise the yeah. Praise the yeah. And we know the word Shemar in Hebrew or Shema is it means to obey. That's correct. Here. So That's uh, correct. This is what we instructed or commanded you to hear. Yeah. And we're talking about the law of the Most High Yahweh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. So we understand that the law of Yahweh, Yahshua came and he magnified the law and he made it honorable. Praise Yeah. So, so oh, yeah. so this law is not done away with then. Oh, he didn't come to do, he came to fulfill. Oh, so could you um, throw with something that he, he came to magnify and honor? Yeah, I mean, you can't do away with thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. But people still steal today. Right? <laughs> they still kill today. Disobeying and disobeying the law. So there's nothing new under the sun. So yeah. let's pick this up in Matthew chapter 22, and we're going to read verses 34 through 40. See how Yahshua magnified the law. Verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Mm. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Praise yeah. Praise yeah. Praise yeah. We know it's a difficult thing mm. um, to keep all this law of the Most High Yahweh unless the Holy Spirit can dwell within us. Mm. So we, it, it, I mean, so we, we, we're striving to keep the, the righteousness of the law, or the spirit of the law, and to walk in the spirit of the law. Yeah. yeah. Because the letter, the letter kills. Of course. Yeah. None of us would be alive today <laughs> if we, you know, go by the letter of the law. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we praise the Most High Yahweh for allowing us, you know, allow His Son mm -hmm. to come and show us how to walk in the law, walk in righteousness, mm -hmm. the spirit of the law. Yes, sir. And uh, let's let's see how we get the authority of to do the things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're going to pick it up in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter eighteen. Mm -hmm. and we're going to read one verse, verse twenty. It says, 
For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I, there am I in the midst of them. Praise God. Praise God for that. Knowing that we are not alone here today. That's correct. You know, the Mishiach, the Spirit, dwell within us, you know, two or more. Always in the midst. Always in the midst. Mm -hmm. To dictate uh, the path that we should go and uh, should walk among man mankind today. And we know that Yeshua said that he's the master of the Sabbath. Uh, so he, he, he instructed us on how we should observe the Sabbath. That's it. So let's uh, go to the book of Isaiah mm -hmm. and see what it says, what the prophet has to say in regards to these things, in regards to how we should observe the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pick it up at Isaiah chapter 58 and read verses 13 and 14. It says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of the light, the holy of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, mm -hmm. and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Praise yeah. God. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that um, Praise pre, uh, pre class um, Shabbat. Knowing that uh, Yahweh meant everything that he said. Yes, sir. Yeah. Not one word he says, sir, return for it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're welcome again. And I thank you for um, you joining us today. And if you notice, um, our elder brother, <laughs> Yahuda, is not here today. He's on a journey. He will, you know, prepare Yahweh on um, Protect him and guide him yes, sir. and um, allow him to return and continue mm -hmm. the will of the Most High. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was on, I was on further the time last week too. Oh, oh yeah, I, I totally uh, forget about that. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. My, um, my, my oldest daughter graduated. So yeah, praise God. Praise God for that. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we do, you know. We, you, know <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know, the law shouldn't be a burden to us. Mm -hmm. You got sometimes, you know, we need to take a little time of our family. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know, if you go back and study all the the whole constitution mm -hmm. is structured. You know, a priest is you know uh, serve for a certain amount of time. That's right. Then they rotate. That's right. Everything. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, sometimes yeah. The course, they call it the course. The course, the course yeah. Run their course. course. Right. Yeah. Right. You're absolutely right, my dear. Can yeah. 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 Thank you for that, man. Uh, well, you know we um, you know we're on the law, and let me repeat um, today's title. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, today's title is the attire of the high priest within the law. Yahweh himself has uh, given everything, you know, to Moshe. So today, what I would like to do, I would like to, I know we read um, Exodus 28. Mm -hmm. I would like to go back over Exodus um, 28, um, you know, and see if we can, you know, expand on the thing that Yahweh has given us, you know, this attire, this, um, um, the, the, um, the attire for the, um, for the priest. I think we have a, 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 a picture of it. Okay. I'll show it to you real quick. We can't show them exactly what it is that we read. Okay. So turn your book to um, um, Exodus chapter 28, and we're going to pick it up at verse um, 15 through 30, 30, 35. All yeah, right. because um, let me get um, that uh, picture up there mm -hmm. to see if that we can show them because we are going to. Um, okay, it's there now. Right. Praise the hour for that, man. A beautiful picture. So what exactly is this room that is? Well, as we read and go, we're looking at the ephod mm -hmm. of the priest. And the ephod have a lot of things on it. But um, can you pick, put up, pick it up at verse 15 so All right. we can have them follow. Exodus chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. After the work of the ephod, Thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, mm -hmm. and of twine linen. Thou shalt thou make it. Four 
four, squ four square, rather, it shall be being double spanned. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, let me read that again. Verse 16. Four square it shall be being doubled. Mm -hmm. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set it in the settings of the stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. Mm -hmm. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a lador, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, and an onyx, and a jasper. Thou shalt be set, they rather shall be set in gold in their enclosings. That's the um, break for a second there, my deacon. All right. If we should look on the screen here, we can see the, which is talking about the, the breastplate of the ephod, mm -hmm. because the ephod is a complete attire for the um, for the priest. Mm -hmm. I hope they hear me. Um, for the priest, and um, it involves the breastplate along with other things which we're going to go through. At the top here, we have the linen turban. This is his head covering. Um, here, as my deacon read, read um, in um, Exodus 28, which we have four rows. One, two, three. I'm going to run out. One, two, three, four. Sorry about that. These are the rows, and we have three columns. And each have like a, a pocket inside of them where they store these all these stones plus on the shoulder we have the um the urine and the thermin okay which and the whole complete breastplate is sometimes determined as breastplate of judgment okay let's go back and continue from uh are we going to go a little bit on that plate why they call it the plate the breastplate of judgment so we got some examples of that what people uh, utilize. Okay. Somebody else's. Yeah, we're going to um, look up um, scripture also to show, you know, mm -hmm. some people use it incorrectly, some use it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the most I answer, mm -hmm. you know, through those things because they have to be a balance in life mm -hmm. and they have to be the fleshly part of it and we have to have the spiritual part of it. Mm -hmm. And that's where Yeshua do the spiritual part of it well, on, the, on the other side, the Aaronic priesthood do the f flesh the part of it. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and continue um, verse um, 21. Verse 21. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. twelve according to their names, like the engraving of a signet, every one with his name, that shall they be according to the twelve tribes. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the, at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold and thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold and shalt put the two rings on the ends of the breastplate mm -hmm. and thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate and the other two ends of the two wreathen chains thou shalt fasten the two, in the two ouches mm -hmm. and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it that's correct. And this is what my deacon is reading. This is the shoulder piece. We have like a, I would say, a little hook or thing to um, to hang the, the, uh, the breastplate on the breast. Up on the, up on the breast. Mm -hmm. Verse 26. And thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate, in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And two other rings of gold thou shalt make, and shall put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the four port, toward the four part thereof, mm -hmm. over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod. Mm -hmm. And they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it may be above the curious girdle of the ephod, mm -hmm. and that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before Yahweh continually. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart mm -hmm. when he goeth in before Yahweh. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before Yahweh. Continually. 
Oh, let, let, let's take a break just for a second right there. And um, um, I'm going to read a little bit about the, the urine and the thermin. Let me get back to that. Because um, those stones are very important, very important to the high priest. Because, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm reading out of the Nelson, I'll call it book again, the Nelson New Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Let me see what mankind have to say about the urine and the thermin. Gen, it is a gen, gens or stone carried by the high priest and used by him to determine God's will in certain matters. You know, certain answers are beyond mankind. Okay, and you have to you have to do it in prayer, okay, meditation to get those answers from the most high. <clears throat> Many scholars believe. These gems were lots that were cast much as a dice or thrown to aid the high priest in making important decisions. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that before? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I know we don't have a concrete yeah, and it, yeah, go ahead. They didn't show an image of it. We we, we haven't seen an image of it. Yeah. You know, they were going they were going to describe mm -hmm. the book. So we know that they speculated and because I looked up some some images of it and I saw that they Put it as a, a black stone and a white stone. Okay. To represent balance, dark and light, or judgment, mercy. You know. Oh, you have, you have a point. You have a point there because you know when we you know start reading this law book in the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. we can see where the law represent the light, mm -hmm. and darkness represent you know, um. Um, not understanding the scriptures, right. Right. understanding that light, mm -hmm. which light is in the law. Praise God. Okay, praise God. Uh, let me continue. The urine and the thummim were either on, by, or in the high priest's breastplate. For this reason, the breastplate is often called the breastplate of judgment mm -hmm. or decision. In, in the instruction for making the breastplate, the linen was to be doubled to form a square. If the top edge was not stitched together, the breastplate would be an envelope or a pouch. In other words, it had to have like a little pocket for the high priest to put those stones into the breastplate. Yeah. I said, Just, you have to stay close to his heart. You have to stay close, yeah, close to his heart. Interesting. So mm -hmm. when he used it, so it wasn't every time that they used the urine and thummim. It was just specific times when he, when the priest would use it. That use it. that's correct. So it was a specific. It had to be a, like a trying event. Yeah. Or something. Or going event. to a war, whether you to go okay. war or not. Mm -hmm. You understand? The Yahweh will give you because Yahweh know the outcome even before. Mm -hmm. Because he's not um <laughs> he's not um uh, abide by time mm -hmm. or in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was before time and he was before anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. Um, that's done. Okay. Um, many scholars believe the urine and thummim were kept in, in this pouch and were stones or gem with an engraved symbols that signify yes or no or true or false. By these, the high priest reached a decision according to this theory. And these are theory. These are mankind theory. We don't know exactly what they're for, but we know, because we're going to look into a few scriptures and see what information we can get from them. Very good. Yeah. <clears throat> the Jewish historian Josephus, a contemporary of the Apostle John, believed that the Urim and Thummim had to do with the flashing of the precious stones in the breastplate. Later, Jewish writers believed that the letters in the names of the 12 tribes of Israel engaged, engraved on the stone stood out or flashed in succession to spell out Elohim's answer. Mm. This theory does imply that the Urim and the Thummim could produce answers to questions that call for more than a mere yes or no reply. Another theory is that by uh, star staring at the urine and thummim, the high priest went into a state of ecstasy 
or trans during with Elohim spoke to him. Because you know, if you look back at even Peter, he mm -hmm. went into a thorn at the top of the house. That's right. And that's when uh, the most I, you know, talk with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back and forth. So it could be in a case like that, but we're not 100% sure of these things because Yahweh didn't reveal these things unto us. So these are another mysteries. Yeah, another theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's it then, um, the throw me um, yeah, that's what I was saying. Student or Bible teacher should bear in mind that all these theories are pure guesswork. Mm -hmm. So everything that is mentioned in this book, they're not 100% sure about it. Yeah. yeah. I have a reference there, though. Yeah, go ahead. Read with you. They say, uh, if I ask you this question, perspective here, it says, uh, Urim and Thummim, and mm -hmm. meaning lights and perfection. Mm -hmm. Some make these simply to be a collective name for the stones of the breastplate, so that the total effect of the twelve stones is to manifest the lights and perfections of him who is the antitype of the Aaronic priesthood. Mm. This would seem to be conclusive that the Urim and Thummim are additional to the stones of the breastplate, in use, the U and T were connected in some way not clearly expressed with the ascertainment of the divine will in particular cases. So it pretty summar summar summarizes this. Similar. Basic, 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 basic. This is the, the answer would be spelled out. Just like I always said when Locke spoke to about people. Yeah, he didn't say that in here, but we know that, that, that our fathers used Locke's now, what, what was a lot of the gas? And, 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 uh, you know, uh, we don't exactly know. Right. Some said maybe a, a two piece of stick or something, mm -hmm. and, um, but it's up to Yahweh. Whatever scenario they use, uh, we just have to ask it because that's the spirit Yahweh put in their heart at that time. Mm -hmm. We do. So it, it's pretty much. But um, mm -hmm. I know, um, I know that. Um, you know, especially within other sects, different sects, they will say, why are we reading these things? Why are we doing these things? Mm -hmm. Number one, you know, not only for understanding, mm -hmm. but to know for sure that these things parallel mm -hmm. with the Mishiach in life. Correct, correct. So we know that Mr. Mashiach didn't wear this attire now. No. You know, but he was not a uh, ironic priest. That's correct. But he was the high priest. He was the high priest because he was of, of a different order. Mm -hmm. So this he was of the order of Melchizedek. That's correct. So he, he so we so we're going to see how it parallels. Is is a uh, uh, I guess we would, this is a spiritual garment that he's wearing. Mm -hmm. so we're looking at the physical, natural garment of the high priest mm -hmm. of the ironic order. But then now we're going to see when we get into that section how she had parallel with the spiritual attire. That's All correct. Right. That's correct. Because he's the one that is given judgment. Mm -hmm. He's given um he's given everything. He's given over to him. This is what we read about when we talk discuss the weighty and matters of the law. That's correct. Mercy and judgment. And judgment. Uh let, let, let us go and um, finish this um Exodus. Exodus chapter twenty eight. Exodus chapter twenty eight, verse thirty one. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue. And there shall be an hole in the top of it, in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of a habergeon, of a habergeon, that it be not ranked. Mm -hmm. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. Mm -hmm. A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe of round about. Mm -hmm. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before Yahweh, and when he cometh out, that he die not. Yeah, let, let's take a look at those bells. Because those bells, I mean, all oh, right here. If you look at that, and mm -hmm. those bells have a significant meaning also. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're there for a purpose. Because if the high priest mm -hmm. goes into the most holy of holy of, uh, of Yahweh, and he's with sin, he don't repent before or atone for the sin before, mm -hmm. he's going to be dead. See, so and nobody can go in there together. And nobody can go in there together. Mm -hmm. So who, who made these garments? 
for them. I, 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 I believe Bezley, I believe it is on some sort of Yeah, show. yeah. I don't exactly yeah. remember the name, who made, but Yahweh has given those um, brothers the spirit to make these garments. I mean, these men have skill. Oh, I man. Mean, for you to carve out a bell and a pomegranate. <laughs> yeah. Now, we know that, it, okay, they were not artists among our people, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying something now. If you make a, if you have someone to engrave a pomegranate, mm -hmm. you have to have some type of skill so that the person over here that sees it. If I if I sketch something or put something in, and I can't form it correctly, how would you know it's a pomegranate? If, if you don't look like one, it has to, it has to have skill. Is what I'm saying when they when they actually do the work, create these things, so you know exactly what what what, what it was. was. Yeah, anybody would know. It. Oh yeah, that's a bell. That's a pomegranate. Yeah. 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 I was looking back into um. Um, but uh, I guess it's um uh, it's not in there. But I, I guess uh, I found those things in the um in the um the book of um, Noah, mm -hmm. <laughs> where you know you have given men. But it's in I think it's in verse five. But I'm not going to tolerate. Uh, I'm not going to wait too long. I waste much time there. But um, but what I want to segue into, I want to look and. You know, how this Urim mm. and this Purim is used in the history of our forefathers. Okay. How they use that. And um, I'm trying to say which book I should start first. Uh, let's look at David first. Okay. Because David's heart was towards the Most High Yahweh. Let's go to the book of First Samuel. Now, question ever was David a high priest? Oh, no. Hmm. David was not a priest. But he was a special individual. Uh huh. Yeah. So this, you know, this is the attire of the high priest. Now. I know. So this is very interesting. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, touching the holy things of the Most High Yah, and um, hey, you could be killed. But many people have have, have attempted. Yeah. And we're gonna be, we're gonna look at an example too. Okay. So where are we going, there, bro? Um, thirty. Um, first Samuel chapter 30. Samuel. Yeah. We want to keep the story in context, so we want to pick it up at verse 1, and maybe we can take it to verse 8. All right. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when, da when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south. Mm -hmm. And Ziklag, and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. Mm -hmm. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were, were taken captives. Mm -hmm. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. What they said about um, when you weep to your cry to Yahweh, mm. he will answer you. That's right. why he answered even more quickly. Does it rend your heart? Not your garment. Not your garment. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Malika. Interesting. And David's two wives were taken captives Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in Yahweh, his Elohim, mm -hmm. the leader. Yeah. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought the, the, and brought, I'm sorry, and Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired of Yahweh, mm -hmm. saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Yeah, bless the most high. Praise God. You, you see, when you look, if you look in that, you know, a little deeper, you realize that um, David was so special. No, but, but he had the priest there. A Bible was the priest. He said, I have the priest to even to look. But I did you read the sermon. Inquire of, uh, uh, or I mean, it didn't state it didn't say what uh, a bodyguard used the ephod to inquire. Mm -hmm. would, he, would he have the authority to do such? I mean, he's a high priest. He's authorized to do but certain he, things, but he didn't do it. No, but they were afraid. 
You know, because they know that David was a chosen vessel before the Most High. This is this is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's look on. Um, I want to go to. Um, let's read a little a little. Um, I hope we did inquire of Yahweh, but Yahweh answered it. Of course. I want to look on Saul now. Okay. Yeah, let's let's go to the book of um I think this still in that book. And I have my um I have my notes upside down. <laughs> yeah, but but the bottom line is um before we go back, look go into second second Samuel chapter six, verse um fourteen. Second Samuel Chapter 6, verse, we'll pick it up at verse 12. All right, there we go. Second Samuel, chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And it was told King David, saying, Yahweh hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of Elohim. So David went and brought up the ark of Elohim from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Mm -hmm. And it came, and, and it was so, that when they bear the ark of Yahweh, verse 13. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of Yahweh had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before Yahweh with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we see David again, Yahweh allowed him to do all these things with the ephod. Mm -hmm. And he was an high priest. So what was he wearing the, the entire uh, no, no, uh, no, I don't think he was right wearing the, the breastplate mm -hmm. at this time. That's why I said the breastplate is, is hooked up, you know, Separate. separately. You know, when you're going, you know, going for really information, mm -hmm. you really um, need a, a, a model to resolve by Yahweh. Mankind can come up with that answer. So you have to go to Yahweh to get those answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just when you put, yeah, that's represent. And now we, we're going to see, oh, Yahshua parallel everything. Mm. Because Yahweh blessed it. But, you know, I, I, I want to read some more. And that, let's go to Psalms, um, Psalms 96 uh, and 98. David was a man after Yahweh's heart. Mm -hmm. And we see that uh, this, now we know that the Urim and the Philippines, and we understand that the, 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 the ephod was for, Inquiring of Yahweh, mm -hmm. and this is this is this is this was very sacred. Yeah, and Yah and now David, he's dancing with the ephod. So some might take that and say, well, he's using holy things in a you know in a un inappropriate way. Inappropriate way. Yeah, you yeah. know. But David was a man after Yahweh's heart. That's correct. Yeah. So we see that. Yeah. This, 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 and then the Mashiach proceeded from David. Mm -hmm. So he magnified the law now and takes it to a whole other level. That's why I said David was a special man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was very, very special. Yeah. The song says to make a joyful noise unto Yahweh. Of course. And so we see this is what he was doing. Said verse 14 said that David danced before Yahweh with all his might. Mm -hmm. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahweh with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Oh man, that was a with overwhelming joy. Yeah. I know that because he had a problem in for it because if you remember first when David went to get the ark mm -hmm. um, and especially uh, uh, Uzzah he lifted up his hand he lifted up his hand, up his hand. hand. Yeah. And then when the ark was stung mm -hmm. and bam he wasn't supposed to touch it and Yahweh would take him out yeah. and he thought he was doing a good deed you know and to some I mean it would seem as such he thought the oxen stumbled mm -hmm. but, but Yahweh had it yeah, if Yahweh don't sanctify, you don't set your part to do certain things, stay out of it. So then, but now we see an example of that. So he was killed for mm -hmm. touching the heart. For touching the heart. But here it is, David is, is holding the ephod. He dancing with it, you know. So this is, yeah, is that a double standard? It's not a double standard because um, David, as what I said, David was unique. He was Very, sanctified. He was sanctified. He was, he was set apart. Mm -hmm. How many to times do, was he anointed? Uh, I think David was anointed about three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Praise, um, praise God, man. Praise God for that. And at the same time, 
I'm trying. If you have any more um, things that you want to say or script, go ahead. Well, we had we had a couple of examples mm -hmm. of the uh, of the ephod. We also had uh, the, the book of Judges, chapter mm -hmm. eight, mm -hmm. that uh, Gideon. Let's go there. Let's go there. Uh, uh, ephod. And uh, read that account here. It's in the book of Judges, chapter eight. We're going to read verses, um, read from verse 24. 24. It says, uh, oh, I, I started 22. It says, Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Mm -hmm. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. Yahweh shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that you would give me a, that you would give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that was requested that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about the camel's necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither a whoring after it, with which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. So we see that, you know, people have taken this up and 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 and, and, and utilized it. Just yeah. like you, you, were, you were talking about Saul, we gotta go here. Yeah, we have to this became there. a snare to the children of Israel. Of course. With what he did. No, we understand why not much is um is said about the urine and the thorny. Mm. Because then they will worship those images. See. It will become it, it, you know, will become a god to them. Mm. So our father had issues with following the idols. You know? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. See. They fall they're falling on the on the job to this day, man. Yeah, but as we said, we want to look on uh, on Saul's side now. Let's go to first um Samuel okay. chapter twenty-eight. All right. What verse are going to be? I don't know if I want to pick it up um at verse one. Because we want to keep it in context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh well, uh, yeah. Yeah, pick it up at verse one okay. and um yeah, pick up with verse one, take it to verse seven. First Samuel chapter 28, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare mm -hmm. to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore I will make thee keeper of my head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together, and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. He, he, he never had any courage, man. Yeah, he, yeah, he's something else. Remember, he was hiding. He was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> when well, Yahweh called for him, you know. Well, yeah, so it's deep, but Saul was a man. I mean, he was the, 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 the purpose why Yahweh raised him up in the beginning. Mm -hmm. he, gave them, he, he gave them Saul out of his anger. That's right. Yeah, and that's so, right. You know, so, yeah, the, uh, he, he, he wasn't destined to... He was just to, to rule forever. To rule forever. Yeah. And then he was a Benjamin. He was a Benjamin. Yeah, he was a yeah, yeah, Benjamin. He was supposed to be a king. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, verse 7. Or oh, verse 6. And when Saul inquired of Yahweh, Yahweh answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Mm. You can't see it right there. Mm -hmm. So he inquired of Urim. And Yahweh. Urim also. Yahweh didn't respond. Yeah, y'all would not like you. <laughs> Pretty much. See, so that's like, uh, I mean, now, if you inquire of Yahweh through prayer, mm -hmm. but you don't confess your sins and you're not honest with, with, 
with YT yeah, that yeah. you don't hear since. You know, so if, if we don't confess what we do, in a sense, and we know Saul, he he had an issue. He had some things he wasn't he wasn't coming correct towards Yahweh. Yeah, because Yahweh gave him a command mm-hmm. to go out and kill the, all the Amalekites, right. and he failed to even to kill the king. Right. Saul would have to kill the king. Mm-hmm. And then he, in, in, even in his confession, he, mm-hmm. didn't, he didn't acknowledge everything it was that he still wanted to be honored in the sight of his people. Yeah. So he really didn't repent from his heart. No. So he's like, yeah, we rejected it. You, you, you ain't even being honest about the situation. Of course. And if you even look on this story where he um, he tried to intrude, intrude in the priesthood, and from that time, Yahweh have taken the kingdom away from it and have given it to King David. Mm-hmm. So significant. Yeah, That's man. Deep. So where else we going on? Go, go ahead. You can read verse um, 7. Verse 7. Mm-hmm. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. Mm-hmm. And his servants said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor. So now they, they said in verse uh, three. 3 that they got rid of all the other. Uh, got rid of all the other. Yeah. yeah. They stash, they knew. And they knew where to find her, too. <laughs> oh, man. But you know, this is about following instruction that has been given to right. you. Because knowing that Yahweh, I mean, when you look at it, even if you go back, mm-hmm. when they said kill everything, right? Even even something on the breast, kill them all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I leave this good thing. The, the animal, kill them. They are our first thing. Mm-hmm. Yahweh didn't want none of them. No. Yeah. That's, 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 that's heavy. Yeah. But so, but but then you can, in another perspective, you can see mm-hmm. Saul. He's desperate. Very desperate. Yeah. He's, he's praying to Yahweh. It's not that he didn't go to Yahweh. He went to Yahweh. He prayed. He's, he's inquiring. He went. He, he even took the urine. And, and Yahweh answered. And so he, he now he's just like, oh, Yahweh went for something. Now he went to a a, 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 a wizard. You know, you know when he went, <laughs> you know, Saul went to him and said, man, look here, man. Okay, I'm gonna give you like give you another chance. Mm-hmm. And he still failed. Yeah. Yeah. As a king, you can't just fail. You know, mm-hmm. when you come to Yahweh. Being an authority. Yeah, yeah, being an authority. Much is required from you. That's right. That's that's where it is. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, but we're, we're going to see, you know, all, all, all these things, the urine and the thermin, the breastplate and everything, tied in to the most, you know, or the most high tied into um, Yeshua. Because Yeshua, the Mashiach, he was quite unique. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, you know, when we look at it, it requires a deep-rooted faith in Yahweh to understand how the law worked through Yeshua, mm-hmm. because he was the law. Mm-hmm. He magnified it. Man, the whole book is uh, about it. Read, read, read that Psalms. Uh, I think it was Psalms 40. All right. It said, come in uh, the book of the volume. So everything here. If anyone is saying out there, the law is done away with. Mm-hmm. They have no understanding. Of what the scripture is saying. That's it. Yeah. Let's prove all things that he says. Psalms chapter 40. Mm-hmm. And we'll read verse. Let's read what? 1 through 7? Yeah, you can read 1 through 7. Okay. Psalms chapter 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for Yahweh, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Mm-hmm. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. And establish my going. Mm-hmm. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our Elohim. Many shall see it and fear, and shall see, and shall trust rather in Yahweh. Blessed is the man that maketh Yahweh his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Yahweh, my Elohim, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, mm-hmm. and thy thoughts which which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak them, they are more than I, that can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my Elohim, yea, thy law is within my heart. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. So Yeshua, Yeshua. Was was, uh, was was talking through that weed. That's correct. We know Yeshua, uh, that Yeshua was not 
of, of con con not even conceived at this time. That's right. Mm. That's a thousand way. years, of, about approximately a thousand years after his father died. Mm. So David wasn't speaking about himself. No. This one is David. So. The guy said you have to read this book with understanding mm. what it's all talking about. Um, mm. Yeah, man. Um, all right. Let me segue into the new, new, um, the New Testament now. Just if I can get a little more, bit more information, right. what he represents. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of John. It's going to be a long reading, so if you want to help you, <laughs> let me know. Okay, I'll say, uh, yeah, you want to start with this, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, because um, John chapter, which chapter? 11. John chapter 11. I really want to get the, um, uh, a vast amount of information from that. Um, from that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We're going to the gospel of we're, we're, we're going to the gospel of John chapter eleven. And we're going to pick it up at verse one. Mm -hmm. John chapter eleven, verse one. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, or Eleazar, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Adonai with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Mm -hmm. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Adonai, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Yahshua heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of Elohim, that the Son of Elohim might be glorified thereby. You know, they did not have no clue at all what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So there was a purpose for the sickness. There was a purpose. So, so this purpose was all of Praise yeah, praise yeah, yeah. Verse five. Now Yahshua loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into into Judea again. Mm -hmm. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? They scared. Mm. Last time he did, they tried to stone me, man. You, 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 what, you sure you want to go back? Come on, man. <laughs> Verse 9. Yahshua answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. I, um, uh, take a pit right there, um, mm. a bit. Um, let me, uh, Verse 9. Mm. Yahshua answered, Are there not twelve, twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Mm -hmm. Just looking at that verse, that's a time frame given to us by Yeshua. Right. Which time of the uh, period of the year mm -hmm. you get 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of sunlight? During the summer. During the summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. during the, is it the fall too? I mean, you have the spring equinox, mm -hmm. and then you have the, the autumn equinox. Mm -hmm. So at certain time is equal. So we know the time frame. It has to be one of them. Yeah, that's the equal. Just, and that's just the equal. Now that's the equal. The plants track the light. That's correct. That's what they, they grow. Grow. Because they grow. it needs the sunlight. And when it, when it comes down to winter or the fall season, mm -hmm. we know that the light is, is less of the light. So mm -hmm. they have more darkness, and that's when they, they start to harvest. That's correct. So they track the light. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's that, they, that is a clue for us, you know, yeah. when to start our crop, too. Mm -hmm. And it helps us how to um, the holidays, how to get the holidays correctly. Mm -hmm. Because it's based on, and it's never changed. Mm -hmm. It all, I mean, the um, the spring equinox falls between you know, the 20th and the 21st of March. Okay. And I think um, the uh, autumn fall way back, I think, in September. Mm -hmm. okay. September the 20th or the 21st or the 22nd. Mm -hmm. close, but don't quote me there. But uh, it's mm -hmm. close to that. You can look it up yourself. So we were given these things for signs. For signs. For seasons. For, for seasons. Season. Now we know that the winds the solstice, mm -hmm. which is a, is a sign as well. It's, it's a sign as well. They use this, but we know if we understand the nations were given up to worship the whole thing. That's so right. now we have purpose for these, for all of the, the, the lights, the mm -hmm. lesser lights, the greater light, all that was created. 
But mankind has, has been given over to worship them. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct, man. That's, that's deep. <laughs> yeah. But a matter of fact, Yahweh gave them over to the other nation to worship. <laughs> what is a scientist then? You know, when, when you have a plant, Yahweh made mm -hmm. a plant mm -hmm. that would track the light chemically. You know, ain't nobody, he ain't got a clock inside of it, but he knows when the, when the light stops, when it's, when it's less than 12 hours or more darkness, yeah. it's time to bloom. It's time to he, bloom. He knows. You know, yeah. Yahweh already put that law in it's time to bloom. He, he, that's, you know, that's correct. See, that's correct, my dear. Yeah. No, no other son. Nothing new. And it's the way Yahweh prepare, you know, the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. You know. He's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, man. But you know, all these little clues which are written in the Bible, mm -hmm. we need to grab hold of them because they're very, very important to us. Praise God. Yeah. Verse 10. Verse 10. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. Mm -hmm. These things said he after that, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Mm -hmm. Then said his disciples, Adonai, if he sleep, he shall do well. Come on, no, come on, man. You were walking, you were walking beside him to shack himself. They doubted, or they didn't have faith. They didn't have well faith. They didn't have that understanding. But he's, but that was, that would be to Yahweh's glory because yeah. they're not seeing it. When they do see this miracle, they must, you know. So yeah, it's all to Yahweh's this glory. This is the son of uh, Elohim himself, right. Yahweh. Yeah. Good. Man. Verse twelve. Then, it, then said his disciples, Adonai. If he sleep, he shall he shall do well. Mm -hmm. Howbeit Yahshua spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Yahshua unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, mm. and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Mm. That's deep. So they didn't have a clue. What was really they going didn't on. have a clue because the spirit was it was within him. Yahweh didn't give him, you know, literally, but he gave him everything. We had an example of that with Elijah. I believe it was Elijah when, 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 when he had a servant with him. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Uh, you know, the, the, the angels of him with swords in hand. Yeah. And they draw him up down. Up, up, up in the mountain. Yeah. yeah. He didn't see me. He's scared. He said, my, my master, don't you see the army coming? Mm. And Yahweh opened his eyes. Look, yeah. You know. Sure, what, what's around him? He, he didn't even see. So we have, just like now, we have we have all kinds of, it's all kind of things around, but we don't see. We don't see them. Yeah. But, it, you know, what's so important, he has given us the spirit to understand what is written. So we know, we don't have to see them mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just to believe. That's right. Our faith. Believe in his seeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Some say seeing is believing. Yeah. But it's the opposite. It's the opposite way. Yeah. Believe in his seeing. Because if you see it, there's no use of so faith in it anymore. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Verse 15. And I am glad to your this that I was not there, to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Yahshua came, he found that they had lain in the grave four days already. Mm. Now Beth, so see, he was dead. It was spent. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Right. I'm not going to get ahead of things. Mm -hmm. Continue to read. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Yahshua was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Yahshua, Adonai, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Mm. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of Elohim, Elohim will give it thee. Look at her faith. Look at her faith. Powerful, man. Yeah. Powerful, First, man. Yeah, if you were here, he wouldn't have, I know he wouldn't have died. You wouldn't have let him die. Yeah. You know, but this, like we said, like what we read at the beginning, mm -hmm. it says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of Elohim. Praise the Son of Elohim might be glorified. Here. Just like the dying man. Yeah. Praise God. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So when certain things happen in our life, mm. you have to look back on yourself. Mm. I said, why did this have to happen to me? Mm. Is it because Yahweh wanted to use me down the, down the road to do something for him? 
then you use this experience what I gained this day to magnify it later on. And we learned that's that's how also you say that then because we read about that with Joseph. Mm -hmm. See, his brothers thought, well, now we sold him. We mm -hmm. got rid of that brother. Mm -hmm. you know? But Yahweh did that to save them. Correct. You know, without them knowing. They had no clue. They had to come begging under the, the same dreams that he had that they thought he was out. Who do you think you are? You know, this is what he said. Where, where, where you get these dreams? You want to rule over us? <laughs> Should I bow down to you? Come on, man. And they came bow down, down several times. Several times. Willingly. He didn't have to ask. <laughs> oh, man. That, that, that's a most sign, man. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Yahshua saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Mm -hmm. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection mm -hmm. at the last day. Mm -hmm. So she believed. She yeah. knew about the resurrection. She knew, yeah, she knew about the resurrection. Exactly. But but look, look in verse 25 now. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Okay, let's look mm -hmm. deeper. I am the resurrection. Mm -hmm. I am that law. Mm -hmm. Ye have the power to, you know, because you believe, you know, to do anything he affirmed that he said i am i am yes, yes. so it. now you see he's made in decision mm -hmm. all the decision when you compare to um the uh, diagram is still up there yes, okay. what the high priests have to do you see the the the, the, the thermin that the breastplate is not in here mm -hmm. but the pocket close to his heart mm -hmm. you understand to make a hard decision so he didn't have to physically wear it. He did not have to, yeah, because of what you said before, where um, Yeshua is not in the new order of thing when he returned mm -hmm. back for the kingdom. He's not going to be wearing an um, ephod. Right. Ephod or, you know, or have the ewer because he is the law. Mm -hmm. He represents everything. Mm -hmm. That the word will richly you. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So now we see the fleshly side. Okay, yeah. which is after law, and then we see the spiritual side, mm -hmm. which is Yeshua after law. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, that's, that's what right. you represent. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, verse verse twenty five again. Mm -hmm. Yeshua said unto her, "I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Mm -hmm. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Mm -hmm. Believest thou this?" So it's a lot of emphasis being put on the word believe. Thank you. You know, so um, I think that's something that we need to do. Like, what is the word believe? Mm. Because I think people lack, I think we, we, we lack understanding and seeing the importance. See, belief brings about some type of emotion. That's correct. It stimulates something inside of you. That's correct. Right? If I just hear something and it doesn't stimulate anything within inside of me, that's it. I just heard something. That's it. But when I believe something, it triggers some kind of emotion inside of me. Now those emotions are going to stir up my conscience, make me start thinking. Mm -hmm. And now my thinking is going to influence the way I start to act and and, and, and put these things into motion. But that's lots of spiritual things. That's what I was going to say. Uh, you have to put it into motion. That's what it is. Because it is a verb. It is a doing word. That's right. Okay, so if you believe, you're going to do what I instruct you to do. And it go all the way back to the Shemin. Hero Israel. That's right. Hero Israel. Mm -hmm. Yahweh El Elohim is one out of name. Mm -hmm. So whatever he instructs you to do, you have to move and do it. Mm -hmm. If you said you believe. Yeah, go ahead. Um, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's but you say he was going to look up he the word. Um, yeah, so, you know, just to refine it from them. But, you know. Yeah, we all. Says, uh, the Oxford. Dictionary says an acceptance is a belief, mm -hmm. an acceptance that a statement is true mm -hmm. or that something exists. Mm. See, so you, what you have to accept, that's what we said. Believing is you have to believe first. That is faith. Then he'll manifest it to you. That he manifest. But if you don't, why should he manifest it to you? Did the servant who is now the servant of Abraham's servant went down to go get him a wife? Mm -hmm. He prayed. He said, "He said, Yahweh, the Elohim of my master." If you sent me down here to get this, let her, let it be like this. And let her do this. Mm. And he believed that Yahweh would, could do it. Yeah. And, it and Yahweh manifested it right in front of him. Right before he, he died. Yeah. 
Pray there, man. Pray, yeah. And show you that, man. If you have faith in, in, in him, man, he, 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 he will allow whatever is in your heart that is good for you. Mm. According to his will. According to his will. Make sure you ask him for things according to his will. Mm. Pray there. It's your will. Mm. Bible will be done. Yeah. That's right. Okay, we're right now at verse 27. 27, yeah. She said unto him, Yea, Adam, I believe that thou art the Mashiach, the son of Elohim, which should come into the world. Mm -hmm. And when she had did, when she had said so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Mm -hmm. Now Yahshua was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha had met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth up to the grave to weep there. Then what? Then when Mary was come where Yahshua was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Adonai, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Yahshua therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Master, come and see. Yahshua wept. Yeah, we know that's a famous scripture there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the shortest he scripture. Dropped the after that, that, back after that. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I mean, this belief in our people. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, and that's why he weep, man. Yeah. Knowing that, I mean, everything is given unto him. And his teaching to them was like they don't fully grasp on everything. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I saw earlier was the, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the the community, I guess, of the people. Yeah. The bond of the people. You know, Yahshua said that if, 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 uh, if one is sick, all of you sick. Yeah. Or uh, I'm paraphrasing. But uh, she's weeping. And they're weeping with her. Yeah. You know, when one more, because we were. They, they, all, they feel all, like it's like uh, the, the the weakest part, well, part of the chain is yeah. broken. That's right. Because you know you're strong as you know weak as the weakest link. Mm. And uh, when one of your brother or sister is hurt, all of us is hurt too. Yes, sir. Mm. Praise God. Yeah, we have to share each other's burdens. Share one another's burdens. That's right. Verse thirty six. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him, and some of them said. Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Mm. So we know this is our people, man. Uh, yeah, that no, no, no one, no yeah. one else, man. <laughs> no, we always want to play games. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Verse 38. Yahshua therefore again groaning in himself, coming, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Yahshua said, Take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, at an eight. By this time he stinketh, mm -hmm. for he had been dead four days. Mm. Yahshua said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of Elohim? Oh. Right, yeah. Verse 41. So we know that he let him die. Yeah. She, they keep saying, if you was hit back, well, that's why I wasn't here. So that he could die. So that when you see this miracle, then you see the glory of Yahweh revealed. Yeah, yeah man. man. Verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Yahshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which set, which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Yahshua said unto him, Loose unto them, loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahshua did, believed on him. Mm. And some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what Yahshua, what things Yahshua had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place 
in our nation. That's the only thing that we were concerned about, man. Power. That their power to stay, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, with their power. Um, but anyway, we, we can stop there. We don't have to go any further. Um, <clears throat> let's go and look. Um, let's segue into the book of Matthew. Mm -hmm. We want to look what was pretty much given to the Mishnah himself. Okay. Let's go to um, Matthew twenty-six. We're gonna start from Matthew twenty-six. I don't want to pick it up, but verse um, 30, 26 and 39. Yeah. Yeah, 39. Verse 39. Then you actually went down to, yeah. We can pick it up. Just read that verse. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Matthew chapter 26, mm -hmm. verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That's what each of our prayers should be mm -hmm. about, you know, about God's will, not our will. Because he couldn't help it. Right. He couldn't change it. Mm -hmm. Because this was Yahweh's will. You know, we're talking about, you know, going toward um, his, um, it's good fiction. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we have to realize that, you know, the will that the other world, or the charge that Yahweh the Most High have set uh, for him, mm -hmm. you know, he have to go through it. Just like all of us, we have to go through it too. He accepted um, it. Yeah, you have to. Let's go in the book of John, John chapter 5, mm -hmm. um, verse 19 through 27. Yeah, he accepted it because we know he prayed prior to that. If it be your will, take this cup from me. Yeah. yeah. So he, he, he accepted it. Yeah. Yes, sir. John chapter 5. What's the verse you want to go? Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Going to 27. Right. You, you know, we're trying to um, uncover, you know, these things that Yeshua was given to Yeshua. Okay. And we know when we look and compare it to um, the urine and, and thermos, mm -hmm. because when you look back and they said that they call it the plate of judgment, the first plate of judgment. Mm -hmm. So of course, judgment has to be within Yeshua because he is the law. Mm -hmm. That's right. He represents the law. Mm -hmm. So there's no way the law could be um, thrown onto the side. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. How can you judge without law? Oh, come on, man. John chapter 5, verse 19. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Mm -hmm. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Mm -hmm. For the Father judgeth no man, but he committed all judgment unto the Son. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah, you see what I'm saying about That's right. Yeah, the, you know, certain things that, you know, the high priest. So, of course, on the Melchizedek um, priesthood also, then he have to make calls also. Mm -hmm. So we see an example of this also in our Ephesians. That's, I'm not, I, think, I think I have that too. Uh, <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, let's finish here. Yeah. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. For the Father judges no man, but he committed all judgment unto the Son, mm -hmm. that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. But well, you know what? I, mean, I look back at verse 23. Uh, I mean, if you don't honor the son, basically you don't honor the father. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some sects out there also who have nothing to do with the son. Yeah, sure. They don't believe that he was a savior. He mm -hmm. was a sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. How could Yahweh accept a, 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 a human being as a sacrifice? Mm -hmm. So we have these old covenants that, 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 that is what they believe. So how do they get to the Father if they do not honor the Son? They use the animal sacrifice. So they void the Mashiach and his totally. death. 
Totally. Yeah, we said there's only begotten. His only begotten son. His only begotten son. Yeah. And if you don't believe in him and doing exactly, that's why it's so important that we have to read this gospel also and tie in with the Old Testament mm -hmm. so that it could be, you know, better understanding to folks out there. Mm -hmm. See, that's a, and that's something that putting that into in, in giving clarity because we have people who believe that when you say the term Antichrist, mm -hmm. they will associate that with okay, the, the Pope or some, you know. They, mm -hmm. But no, we have we have brothers who know Yahweh or say they were called on Yahweh. Yeah, but they don't honor the Father or the Son. That's Antichrist. When you look, when you look, when you, even when you look back in the Book of John, um, where you know they can't help it. Mm -hmm. If Yahweh don't call them, they cannot help it. That's true. That's true. Yahweh have to call, you know, and I'm not saying Yahweh is not going to open their eyes later on. So it means it's not, not, not now, because we have done things in part right now. Correct. Right. Yeah. There are writers, it does be yes, something sir. to trigger trigger off for their eyes to be open. That's right. Praise God. Verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. Mm -hmm. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on, on him that sent me, has everlasting life, mm -hmm. and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Elohim, and they shall hear, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Praise God. Praise God. So you see, everything was given unto him, all mm -hmm. powers, man. All powers. I, That's it. Let, let, let's go to, um, um, it's written in the book of Hebrew. Uh, is it Hebrew too? I would go to in the book of Ephesians. All right. And see what, you know, this um, breastplate is all about. Yeah, because this is what I was receiving as a, uh, you know, spiritually, what Yahshua was wearing. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, my deacon. Praise God. Yeah. And, um, you want to pick it up in Ephesians? Yeah, pick it up in Ephesians. And, um, you want to go pick up a verse uh, 10? Are you going to pick it up one? Pick it up at uh, verse, verse 10. 10, okay. Uh, unless you want to go to one. No, we can go 10 to 17. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Adonai and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, the whole armor, mm -hmm. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having, done, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, mm -hmm. and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. See? So we see that this, so we see the natural, and then we see the spiritual. And we see the spiritual. Okay, so that was shadow of things to come. Shadow of things to come. Mm. It's not about, you know, what I said, the material things right now. Correct. It's more of a, a spiritual thing when it comes to the order of um, Melchizedek. Mm. That's it. But you can see the parallel between the uh, Urine and Thurman mm -hmm. and the Mishiach himself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Verse 14 again. Mm -hmm. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's the key. You have to have faith. So without, all, go, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, without faith, you cannot please more side. It's impossible. It's impossible, man. I was what I was looking at is that mm -hmm. you know we have the word, we have the law, but none of these things are the law. These are things that we have to have. You have to. You know, the law is not faith. He says, 
you know, we have to have faith in it. But the law is not faith. He says, have the, have faith. Have the your loins bear about the truth. That's correct. And 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 if you uh, uh, you see, the laws are yeah. come, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the preparation of peace. Perfect. The law are like commands. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I send you over there for, to go from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Or the law, you know, there's no elaboration on the law. It said, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you kill or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's straight instruction. Mm -hmm. So it is not a faith. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very interesting, you know. All of the, and but, but, but in order for us to have on the complete armor, you have to. We have to have all of these. You have to time everything. Time. Yeah. That's what Mishak said. Right. Be followers of him. Right. To walk in the law blameless. So the, so the letter kills. You know, the letter this kills. Was not, this was not referencing the letter. No. You know, so these, are, these are spiritual things. Yeah. You know, these are not tangible things that one can acquire. You know. mm. Verse 15, 15 again. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Elohim. There he said to take up the word. So, but prior to that, mm -hmm. you got your helmet of salvation, mm -hmm. feet shod with the gospel mm -hmm. of the preparation of peace, your, your shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, all of these things, and then you have the word to seal it all up. You know, but it's the spirit that's going to show you. It's the spirit. And then we read the fruits of the spirit. Mm. It, then we see how all of these things tie together. Tie, tie together. Spiritually. So this Spiritually. Is, yeah. So the, the Mashiach encompassed the Europe. Everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. It left nothing out. It left nothing out. But uh, let, let, let's go and read a little bit more in um, 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 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Sometimes I'm trying to remember the book. <laughs> Praise him. Yeah, first. And we have to break break these things down mm -hmm. down for um for our people so that they can get more understanding. Um I said verse five, but tell us about verse one. Yeah, I don't want to cherry pick, you know, anything. I want to give them more to verse eight. We're going on first first Thessalonians? Mm-hmm. All right. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Mm -hmm. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Adonai so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light, mm -hmm. and, the, and the children of the day. You are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Right. Yeah. Uh, go yeah, go go down. Read down. For Elohim has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Adonai Yahshua Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Praise yeah. Praise yeah. Yeah. Now if we look back in verse eight. But let us who mm -hmm. are of the day. That mean you can see that light is talking about the word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be sober. Mm -hmm. Put it on the breastplate of faith and love. The breastplate of faith and love. That spirit mm -hmm. that the Mishiach left with us, that's what we have to put on. Yeah. Mercy. So, so it's, 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 this is the way you get of the law. That's correct. See? Mercy and judgment. You have, you have to show mercy, man. Judgment was given unto Yahshua. So we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not judging. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. At this time period, you know, uh -huh. we're not judging. Yeah, it's going to come to time. Come time. He said, we'll judge angels. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, you have to prove all things. Mm -hmm. Do you have anywhere you want to? I want to go to Galatians. Okay. And cover this what we were talking about. The spiritual aspect of this garment. In uh, Galatians chapter 5. And uh, 
uh, just wanted to read verse 22 to 26. Uh, okay, turn about the foot of the red uh, um, Are you sure you don't want to show the other side first? Let's go to the old, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 16, straight up at 16, or, or, or um, 16, or you want to hear about 17? All right, here we go. Right. Okay, because sure. remember, you, the letter kills. Mm -hmm. So we want to parallel and show the difference between the letter and the spirit. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 16. Then I, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Man, that is so true, man. Oh. You ever go up there, man, and you want to do some stuff, but mm -hmm. you end up not doing it. That's right. But the things that you don't want to do, that's what you do anyway. That's right. That's right. That's the ongoing battle that we all face. Yeah. Every day. That's right. That's and right. we're going to struggle in and out until when we return to the land and the has return, mm -hmm. you know, for his throne, his father's throne. Mm -hmm. Good. Verse 18. But if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. So we see these things are, are not required, I'm not saying required, but, um, you know, cannot. If you do this stuff, you have to ask for forgiveness. See. You have to repent. And we would encourage our, our viewers to look up these, these, these words to make yeah. sure we have an understanding of what each one of these words are. So we, so we make sure we're not caught up in any of these things. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. fine. Look at verse 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Uh, so which law was he talking about? He's talking about the animal sacrifice. So people who try to so if you, through that. So if you follow the law righteously and walk in them, there is no need for you to sacrifice. See, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But then some would say, well, the law was done away Oh, so you know they have no understanding. That's the only thing I can say. Oh, can the law? I mean, I don't want to break you there to go to show you. We can go there after word okay. in Matthew, Matthew chapter five. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, uh, verse twenty-two. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Mm. And they that are the Mashiachs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So these are the ingredients yeah. that is required for us to do. That's right. So we can enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So these are the garments the Mashiach wore. That is it. Yeah. A spiritual garment. Spiritual. Mm -hmm. Not the breastplate of stone. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is the law, the mm -hmm. spiritual side. You said you want to go to Matthew 11? Oh, Matthew, you, you were saying something pertaining to 18. So, to show that the law wasn't done away with. Because, you know, it's just for us to understand that um, when he said the law, you have to get a better understanding of what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, it comprises of like three sections. Okay. You have the commandment or the law itself. Then you have the statute, and then you have the judgment. In each case, in each cases, they also they call them a law. Mm -hmm. So they deal with the command, commandments alone. They call them a law. Okay. If they deal with the statutes alone, it's just like a, your constitution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So each of different different section in the constitution. All of it. And all you have to study law. everything. Yeah, all or law. Mm -hmm. So when they said, when Paul, especially Paul, said, when he said law, you have to search back to, you know, to figure out which um, law Paul was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They said it's, it's that Paul's words were hard. He had, he had hard sayings when he talked of about them. That, that's what uh, Peter said. Yeah. In the book, uh, yeah, in the book of Peter. I think it's first Peter. 
we're going to Matthew chapter uh, 5, chapter 5. Yeah. Maybe you want to take that song. Yeah, we just verse 17. 17. Yeah, that's fine. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. What do you have to say about that now? So, this, so the same heaven is here, the same earth is here, and so the law is still here. He must be lying to us then. So some, somebody lied. Yeah. I don't know, it's not a machine. Mm -hmm. And also it says the wages of sin is death. Correct. So we know that sin defines as a transgression of the law. That's so correct. people are still dying. People are still dying. So the, the law, law is still in effect. That's right. Judgment is in the law. Verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Praise yeah. You don't have to go any further. Praise I know we um <laughs> we read um a lot in this law, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, when people are saying that these laws are done away with, mm -hmm. you know, and um no, you you have to know that these laws represent something. You know, a part of what it was to come. As what you said before, it's a shadow of things to come. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's try, you know, try your best to understand these things. Listen, mm -hmm. listen to the Shema. Read the Shema and listen to the words, you know, that is uh, mentioned in the Shema all the way up before the gospel. That's right. And the revelation and the letters of the disciples, mm -hmm. and the apostles. I know we're in the law, so uh, we're going to be like saying, we're back into the law <laughs> where we start, where we first started. Again, we started from the book of Genesis. Yes, sir. So I know we don't have much time. Uh, we got about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah, so we're going to pick it up back in the book um, Numbers. Not Numbers, but the book of Exodus. Yeah. About the law. Uh, and again, I don't remember. We had stopped at uh, 35. Numbers? Uh, we Exodus, Exodus chapter 35? We were in uh, Exodus chapter 28. Mm -hmm. You want to finish uh, chapter 28? Or are we, are we doing no oh, we're on? good. We're good. We're just talking about picking up from um, the, 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 um, from last Shabbat, where we stopped. Um, I think we did 29. So we're going to start at chapter 30. Mm hmm. Exodus chapter 30, verse 1. Verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon, of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square, four square shall, be, shall it be. Mm -hmm. And two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, thou shalt make it unto thee, shall make it rather unto, unto it a crown of gold round about, mm -hmm. and two golden rings thou shalt make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it thou shalt make it, shall thou make it, and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal, and thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning, when he dresseth the lamp. He shall burn incense upon it. Mm. And when Aaron lighteth the lamp at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before Yahweh throughout your generation. So this is the altar of incense. All right. You know, when the incense goes up, smoke goes up, praise Yahweh the saints. Praise is the praise of the saints mm -hmm. that goes up. That's right. So we have uh, so this uh, this we have this in uh because the whole Moshe was showing the pattern of things in heaven. That's correct. So this so so this is also in heaven. Mm-hmm. Because we read about this in our revelation, we read an uh, example of this of the angel that was before that was before, before. the altar of incense. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Verse nine. 
You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the altar. Verse 10. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is the most holy unto Yahweh. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto Yahweh, when thou number it, when thou number them, that there shall be that there be no plague among them when thou numberest them. Mm-hmm. So we know that they were supposed to number the yeah. children of Israel. Yeah, we know that only the um, the priests that's right. to number um, the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why we have the book of Numbers. Mm. Yeah. Because if we look back at the story of David and um I can't remember the name of um his commander, mm-hmm. um, when he said David, yeah, he said to the king, You think you should I'm just paraphrasing, um, you think you should do that because um Oh his uncle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He realized that, hey, come on man, you're not doing that, you're not following the law. That's right. You know. Yeah, uh, huh? Okay, mm. and then you know Yah- Yahweh gave David three choices. Mm. Which one would you leave? Mm. <laughs> of course, you know, hey man, I'm gonna leave it in your hand, Yahweh, well, because you know the Gosai is a merciful Elohim. That's right. Yeah, right. and you know um, that caused a lot of people to lose a lot of life because of David's sin. Because of David's sin. But Yahweh, but what we read it says Satan had moved David. The number of children of Israel. That's correct. This is something that Yahweh had an issue with the children of Israel before. Before, and so this is how he, he accomplished. He used this occasion um, to take care of his um, those folks. Mm. Verse thirteen. This they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. A shekel is twenty gerahs. And half a shekel shall be the offering of, of the Adonai. Uh, I'm sorry. And half a shekel shall be the offering of Yahweh. Mm-hmm. You know, it says uh, in the reference that one gerar is equal to 11.2 grains. Mm. And so they gave a half a shekel. Okay. Mm. And one shekel, it says, it, uh, basically it, it epitomated to 65 cents. 65 cents. That, that's, what, that's what the offering that they all gave it. Verse 14. Because, you know, looking at it, um, the, 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 um, you know, Yahweh's, we need to take care of Yahweh's out. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Verse 14. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering unto Yahweh. Mm-hmm. The rich shall not get more, and the poor shall not get less than half a shekel when they give an offering unto Yahweh. Isn't Yahweh a fear man? That's right. You wouldn't accept nothing. Nothing more, nothing else. No one to say, okay, I did this. Right. Because I have more money. I'm a real, I'm a wealthy man. Mm. So I give, no, you're going to give according to the instruction written mm. in this law book. Mm. And then when we see uh, the Mashiach magnifying that in the law, when we see the will, mm. she gave all. The, the rich man came and gave out of their budget. Yeah. And then he said, this little poor will, she gave one thing. More. She did, but she gave more than all. Because that was all. That's all she had. Yeah, that's the so we see again the spiritual aspect of this law because we the, the letter this we're reading the letter every man gave this but the spiritual aspect that's what it says see she gave more than all more and then we you know, praise him verse 16 and thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before Yahweh to make an atonement for your souls. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Thou shalt also make a labor of brass, mm-hmm. and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. Mm. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, 
to burn offering made by fire unto Yahweh. So these are these were uh, specific instructions. Mm -hmm. It's between life and death. So if they didn't wash themselves, they have a problem. <laughs> Yahweh have a problem with that. They, they, they're going to be killed. Yeah. But look, but look all this mirror when the Mishak was getting his baptism. Mm -hmm. So these are spiritual things. These are spiritual things. So the priests are being anointed mm -hmm. and prepared for their ministry. Mm -hmm. And they're being washed before mm -hmm. they can go out and do their ministry and perform their work. That's correct. And Yahshua had to be dipped before he, or washed before he, he, he was being prepared for his ministry. That's correct. Yeah. Praise the Amen. Praise so there's so much things when you read, which we said, the Old Testament. We know it's one continuous book. Correct. You understand? But, mm -hmm. you know, what you read in the old, just to get the same precept in the new, mm -hmm. you get an understanding. That's what we read in Psalm earlier. That's the right. volume of the book. Yep. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. So shall they wash their hands and their feet, that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generation. Then again, we were speaking about the law, mm -hmm. the statute that's explaining how to keep the law. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, you have what you said, a good understanding when it comes to the law. All the law has been broken down. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Verse 22. Moreover, Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, and, of, and oil, olive, of, and him. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound, after the art of the apothecary, mm -hmm. it shall be a holy anointed oil. You know, That's today we, now people have these oil, the essential oils. They call it the art of after the art of the apothecary. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when I was thinking of all the things, I can't remember with that um, Christian preacher was like selling those holy water. Oh man, but this yeah, there's no comparison mm -hmm. when it comes to the instruction how you're supposed to pre um, uh, prepare this holy oil. And they sell they sell holy anointing oil. Man, oh, yeah. it's a scam, man. Right yeah. now it's a scam. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it is not done, you know, by their heart, through their heart, man. That's right. It's all about material stuff, man. money, whatever. Agreed, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Verse 26. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table and all his vessels, and the candlestick in his vessels, and the altar of incense. And the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, mm -hmm. and the labor in his foot, and thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout throughout your generation. Upon, upon man's flesh it shall not be poured, neither shall you make any other like it mm. after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. It's so a right there. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's a special instruction. Yeah. Specific yeah. instruction. This is specifically for the, for the only for the temple. Only for, the for Yahweh's use. That's right. Mm. That's the, but you know, mankind on a whole, the, we are having a hard time following instruction anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why, you know, we are distraught for the lack of knowledge. That's right. We refuse to do the work, you know, follow the word of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Verse 33. Whosoever compounded any like it, or whosoever put it any upon any of it upon a stranger, shall be even cut off from his people. Mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 34. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Take unto thee sweet spices, State, and Amja, and Galbanum, these sweet spices with pure with pure frankincense, of each shall there be of light weight. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. 
Now I was I had looked up some of these uh, spices. Mm -hmm. So like galbanum, right? When we look up galbanum, it says that this uh, galbanum it keeps away plague. Yeah, the oil keeps away from okay. it. Okay. They, they still sell the essential oil, Galvin. Okay. And I smell it. It's very bitter. And it's so pungent, but it's used in every perfume. They wow. use it in most perfumes. Wow. But it keeps away plague. Wow. And with all of them, when you consider the, the sacrifices and all of them, they're in the presence of all this blood. blood. Okay. And it, but this oil kept away plague, specifically. That, that, that's that's, that's, that's what it is for? Yeah. Yeah. And so then you have the frankincense and. You know, so yeah, yeah, and everything else because the blood stinks. I know. You know, so you have to keep something yeah. to keep away that. That's why we burn so much incense. It's in Yahweh's wisdom to say, it, but he designed it after the army of commentary. They use these in those days to heal. Yeah, you know, they use oils. Today yeah. they use them. This oil, is, yeah, you know, not this specific, but oil. Period. Yeah, it's all about Benjamin now. Uh, see, yeah, that's that's a, I mean, our people yeah. they don't care what they do. At least other nation because. We have no access to all those homes. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. on a large scale. And that was something that we that, that we lost as a people, just even healing, just through simple things like simple that, things. that Yahweh gave us on the earth. Yeah, praise yeah, praise yeah. Verse thirty-five, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the heart of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy, and thou shalt beat some of it very small. And put it there, and put it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, mm -hmm. where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, you shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. Warning. Mm -hmm. It shall be unto thee holy for Yahweh. Whomsoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. Mm. It's all serious, these little blood. Yeah, they're very serious, man. You think we can get one more? Um, yes, sir. Yeah, we don't want to push it because I know, yeah. New moon. Yes, sir. Praise you. Yeah, That's so there you do. Praise you. Exodus chapter 31, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, See, I have I have called my name Bezaliel, mm -hmm. the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. And I behold, and I behold, and I have given him, and behold rather, mm -hmm. I have given him with him a holy act. The son of uh, of a Hamas, of a Hisham, yeah. of the tribe of Dan, and in their hearts of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. Mm -hmm. So he gave him a helper. Yeah. That's the yeah. He, 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 he put the spirit in him to do all these engravings and all these works and all that skill. He didn't go to school for it. No. Yahweh yeah, just he, he, well, he, the spirit, he put the spirit upon him to take out these people. Yeah. And he gave him a helper. When you look at it nowadays, Yahweh put the spirit in us too. Yes, you know, to do his will. That's right. Not to do our own will, right. but to do his will. That's right. Praise God. Praise God, man. Verse 7. The tabernacle of the congregation, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is thereon, that is thereupon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and his furniture, and the pure candlestick, with all his furniture, and the altar of incense. And the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture, and the labor in his foot, and the clothes of service, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, mm -hmm. and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded thee, shall they do. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath shall you keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that you may know that I am Yahweh that does sanctify you. That's what we're doing today. That's right. And every week. That's right. Not only the weekly Shabbat, mm -hmm. but also the holy days. That's right. That Yahweh, you know, sanctified and said we should keep them. That's right. We should do no work in them also. Mm -hmm. In the season. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. 
Verse 14. You shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Mm. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Now that word perpetual means everlasting. Mm. Yeah. You know, so we understand that this is the first thing that the nations changed. Mm. You know, this is the first thing Yahweh blessed, but this is the first thing that the nations changed. Mm. Yeah. He said they think to change times and laws. Yeah. You know, and they changed this law. And now mankind doesn't know what the, what the Sabbath day is. You know, yeah. you know, understanding the law. Mm. Of Yahweh, understanding the uh, the, the Shabbat day also, mm. you understand. But they are with, they are without wisdom. They are without understanding. Mm. All those spirit Yahweh didn't infuse it into them, mm. so they do not have the heart mm. to walk, you know, to keep the Sabbath day holy. So you have, but you have earthly wisdom and earthly knowledge. Mm -hmm. But then they have, but then the spiritual wisdom. And so this is what they, they they're not seeing is the spiritual wisdom. That's correct. Right. The spiritual aspect of it because. I was watching a documentary on the the, the animals that are mm, on the water okay. and you see and these 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 scientists. I said if they didn't go under there and record it, we probably wouldn't even see half of these things. So I'm yeah. grateful for them. But you have to, you know. But then I but then I look at it and I said, well, it's because of they they they're, they're seeking after wisdom, mm -hmm. but it's earthly wisdom. They want to understand. Well, how did what's here? How did it get here? What you but know, what causes? You know it. Uh, although it may be like earth to wisdom, mm. you know, if you know what Yahweh operate, mm. he used the animal that he have created to teach mankind too. That's right. But mankind don't want to ex ex expand on it or, you know, get above it, mm. you know, to know that, look, this is what Yahweh, he has given the, anim the animal them instruction. That's right. And they obey. That's right. So why can't you obey the instruction that Moses gave to you? Mm. Simple. That's true because we are. Uh, I was watching with the salmon. Mm -hmm. They swim upstream, mm -hmm. up a up a waterfall. Mm -hmm. and oh, that's up, possible. Up, up, I, I I don't know a man that can go up a waterfall, but they swim upstream, go up the yeah. waterfall to this to, to the one spot where they, they they remember where they were born, mm -hmm. and their parents took them there. They go there, mm -hmm. and, and they lay they they, they mate, and mm -hmm. they get and then they die. You know, mm -hmm. They feed the bears that's all around there, so the bears can. Get all that fat so they can stay warm during yeah. the season. You know, okay. All this in balance, you know. But Yahweh has this perfect, just everything is perfect. You mm. Know? Yeah, well, you know what? Look at it that way. They go the opposite direction of the current, mm. you know. But they, you know, they manage to go up. Look at the law the same way. Mm. You, we're going to go up. It's, it's like an uphill. Don't mm. try to do it on your own. Mm. Pray to the Most High through His Son Yahshua. Then it will give you the spirit to go upstream, mm -hmm. to walk in the law of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Praise God. Yeah, praise Good analogy. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I think we were at verse 15. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 15. Yeah, 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Mm hmm. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Mm -hmm. And he gave unto Moshe when he had made an end of communicating with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of Elohim. Praise yeah, praise and praise yeah. praise yeah. And um, you know, at this point, we officially come to the yeah. end of the <laughs> Shabbat discussion. Praise God. You know, I'm gonna open it up to you. Uh, <laughs> you know, know this evening, Ella, the, um, mm. the, the, we were talking about swimming upstream. Okay. You know, the uh, that we're gonna be trying. Mm. Yeah. And so, you know, it may seem, uh, not, it, it may seem strange, 
mm-hmm. some of the things that we're going through in these days and times. To some people, they may say, well, you know, why why do we have to go through these things? Why is it so hard? Mm. You know, because our adversary is about as a, as a roaring lion seeking whom we can devour. That's mm-hmm. correct, right? So I want to read verses of uh, uh, First Peter chapter four. Book. Uh, okay. <laughs> First Peter chapter four. I wanted to read verses um twelve to nineteen. First Peter. Some admonition to the people. Chapter four. It's always good when you're coming from the book itself, man. Praise God. Not over word, right? But the word. Speak, not speaking your words. Yeah. Yeah. But his word. His word. So this is uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, mm-hmm. as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of the Mashiach's suffering. Praise yeah. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of the Mashiach, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of Elohim resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Mm. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, this is what they put now, we know this as a follower of the Mashiach. Yeah, we know they just put that word, yeah, they just put that word in and slip there. Yeah. That's the only place that is in the book, too. Yeah, I think there's maybe one more place. Oh, two, two, yeah, one or two. Yeah. It says, so if any man suffer as a follower of the Mashiach, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Elohim on this behalf. Mm-hmm. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? Wow. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Elohim Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Praise God. Praise God, man. Praise God yeah. for that uh, epistle that you just read, man. So it's all about the gospel of Elohim, the gospel of Yeshua. We have to make sure that we spread that good news mm-hmm. among our people and also, you know, among ourselves and, uh, and the strangers also. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. And uh, it's nothing more than... I guess that the end. All right. Hey, so much man. So Good full class, man. Praise Yahweh. Yeah. And uh, maybe you want to. Um, we have new moon tomorrow. Yeah. So you Tell about it. Like like to tune in uh-huh. um, after sunset. So we should be kicking off about 9 p.m. About 9. About 9 p.m. Yeah, good. So definitely tune us in. Forgive us for not being on Facebook. We're going to re upload the class. We are currently on YouTube, but we're going to re upload the class to Twitch and to our Facebook page. And so just bear with us with the technical difficulties and forgive us. We started a little late, but you know, everything is in Yahweh's time. So, you know, praise Yahweh. You know, continue to tune in and support it. And uh, Yahweh be with you. You know, this Sabbath day, keep it open. Just keep it open. We're still, you know, the Sabbath is still up. So make sure <laughs> we still do the things that are required of us. Praise